All right, so working with exploded diagrams. Now, if you guys remember the very first page there of chapter five, we, talk, we took a look at um, um, the uh, component parts views, and we took a look at exploded uh, views. So I'm going to go back to there. That's what me and Daily were like, whoa, what the heck is this? Wow. Yeah, so this is a bit of an exploded view. This is not technically a very good exploded view, but it does have some indication of like where the parts fit together, right? Now, in real, real exploded views, they would have some sort of like dotted line showing you kind of where, where this fits, right? And so you'd have, but these are all kind of in a straight line here. So this, um, the manifold and the gasket and the, the engine block here, that they all kind of stick together. Uh, here's an exploded view as well. This is a better one. It shows you with like a dotted line here where this, uh, uh, where this kind of bolt fits into the main part of the toilet here to put the seat on and so on. There's little dotted lines here as to where this kind of goes up into the toilet and so on. And exploded view, of course, here with the sneaker, with the shoe. This is a good one too because it does have those dotted lines which indicate which part fits on which or whatever. So, okay. So we are going to be talking about exploded diagrams. And uh, an exploded diagram, let's just read what it says here. A three-dimensional representation of an object that shows how the components connect together. Components are shown separated, but in their relative positions. And dotted lines show where the pieces fit together. So those are, that's the guiding sort of principle here when we're talking about exploded diagram. It's kind of like a, a component parts diagram, except the component parts um, aren't drawn in such a way that you can see how they fit together. It's just the parts like that would be laid out on the table, right? So yeah, this has a bit more information. So if we took a look at a bookcase like this, Okay, or something like this. You would see that this side of the bookcase uh, or shelving unit, this side would it would detach, you know, maybe out this way. The top would detach maybe up this way, and it would be drawn up here. Okay, the side would be drawn over here, and so on. And then what you would do is you would have an indication of where, you know, this this fit together with the shelving unit and so on. The little dotted lines show kind of where they would move to kind of assemble. And so there's all these pieces. So if we were to draw an exploded view of this, this is what it would look like. And you can explore this too on the next page of your workbook. It would look something like this. So they start to look a little bit funny, I think. Um, but let's just examine this a little bit closer as to why this is an exploded diagram. Now, um, I just want to make this a bit bigger for us. So. Okay, so let's take a closer look here. For that shelving unit, as I mentioned, this is the side panel, right? And the dotted lines show where it would assemble to the other pieces. Now, this is the back piece right here, right? That's the back piece. And so this corner of this side would assemble to the corner of the back piece. This is the top piece. This would come down and assemble at that spot as well. And so that's why you see we have two sets of dotted lines there. Okay, dotted line there, dotted line there. Now, the top piece of this, of course, would come down as well. So there's little dotted lines here as well. So you can kind of get that three-dimensional sort of look, right? It's kind of like coming together like this. And so those dotted lines form the path that they would take to meet like that. So all the sides need to be accounted for, the back and the middle shelf. Okay. And something would kind of be the centerpiece, like this would be sort of the centerpiece. And you can kind of see that the dotted lines would almost kind of come towards the middle, right? Coming towards the middle, towards the middle, towards the middle, down towards the, you know. And so you would, it would almost be like you could envision them kind of like sucking in to the middle and surrounding some middle piece. So for number seven, um, sketch an exploded view of this flower planter, okay? Well, what we could do is there's really no middle piece here. I think all the pieces would kind of like, you know, be pulled out in all the directions. So what we could do is probably start to draw just any one of the pieces, and I'm going to draw the first piece in the front. So you can draw this with me. This is a space for you to uh, do your work as well. So we have this piece, right? And we have the side piece as well. So the side piece would kind of look like this. Now we don't have our isometric dot paper, which might be kind of nice, but yes? Okay, so yeah, that was a good question there. Even though we don't see the bottom, 
um, there would be a bottom to this planter, right? We wouldn't want the, the plants to fall right through. So there would be a bottom piece that we would want to include for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if, uh, like I say, uh, in, in order to see that bottom piece, actually, what we might have to do is we might have to do this. We might have to draw it so that we can actually see it. And this is where I'll have to move maybe this one. So if you can erase yours, if you draw it like this, probably should be drawn, this side should probably be drawn over here a bit more. Okay? Just so we can kind of see all the pieces. So we have this side and then we have another side over here, right? And this does not have to be perfect. However, we want to draw, remember it's exploded. What happens in an explosion? Boom! Everything blows out from the center. Right? So think about that. And then of course we have um, the back side as well. So this is going to take a little bit of vision, right? A little bit of imagining kind of how this is working together. So let's kind of draw our lines now and our lines that will help us and again, these pieces, this is not drawn perfectly at all, so I wouldn't expect you to draw perfectly. But you want a, a line connecting those two, because that corner has to go there, right? This corner has to go up there. Make sense? This other corner here, right, goes down there. Now this is where the drawing is not perfect, because my sides aren't very good here, actually. That one goes to there. That one goes to there. So these are how the pieces kind of fit towards the bottom, right? So you don't have to draw the dotted uh, lines kind of behind a panel if you don't want to. So I did over here, but I think it almost kind of looks better if you don't. <coughs> so something like that. Okay, and then, and then I mean, if you do the tops, the, the tops are okay as well. And, and we did that on the other one. So it, it gets maybe a little bit confusing, but you draw this line up here and this line would meet here, right? So this point would meet with this point and mm -hmm. so on. That point would meet with that point. So this gets a little, as long as you draw the bottom ones, I think that probably would be good enough for now, but I think this would be appropriate too. Okay, so does that make sense? Does that look okay for an exploded view? Those dotted lines kind of show you how they kind of suck together, right? Or they unexplode. Right? Okay. Any questions? And if it's drawn perfectly, all these lines should be either, you know, parallel or straight uh, along with each other. And obviously my lines are not, so you, you don't have to, you don't, yours don't have to be perfect either. Okay. Okay, why don't you guys try number eight, exploded view of the box, include all six sides. It's a, a covered box there. It's going to get maybe a little bit busy with all the dotted lines, but do your best. And then if you get done that, before we kind of go over what the answer would be, try and draw this unit right here um, as it would actually look in real life. So this is the exploded view. Now I want you to draw what it would actually look in real life. So work on these two questions here. 8 and 9, and uh, we'll talk about them in a few minutes. Alright, so hopefully you've had a chance to, uh, to do uh, your exploded view. So here's the exploded view for the box. Now, as I mentioned um, while you guys were working on this, it might be a good idea to do the back, the top, the bottom, and the sides first, so that you can draw your front piece out of the way a little bit so that it's not covering anything. If you start with the front piece, then again, that's fine too. You just have to go kind of back far enough so that you're not covering up the rest of the pieces, whatever, with your drawing. So, again, the, there's a lot of dotted lines there. Um, you know, that's the way they're asking you to do it here. So, there's no question on, on how these things move. Now, this is the answer for number nine, right here. So, you were to draw the bookcase as it would look. So what I would hope you would notice with that, there would be the top and here would be the bottom. There would be a middle shelf, which appears to be about halfway between the top and the bottom. There's also one divider that's vertical, and that would be this one here. And then of course you have the back and you have the sides. So we're looking at a bit of a bookshelf that have two smaller uh, compartments and then a larger one on top. Any questions about eight or nine? 
All right, I did want to show you just a couple other exploded view diagrams here. So this one here is kind of interesting. Um, you'll see in real life and in, in a lot of parts, uh, parts catalogs and different things like that that have exploded views. And again, mechanical and different things like that. Though that's the most common other than, you know, the woodworking and stuff too. But the most common is to be able to examine how the pieces of something that's mechanical fits together. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of dotted lines. There are some. And so um, when I work on my old car and I look at diagrams like this, uh, it, it would be nice to know where this thing fits, right? And so that's why they have the dotted lines connecting this hole in this uh, bracket piece to the hole up here. How would I not know that it goes back there or somewhere else? So there are some dotted lines in here, but it doesn't fit everything together. You can kind of see, okay, so is this like the, this is the kind of the axle, right? And so there's the wheel hub. And you know, you've got a little collet there and a cotter key and you've got the hub cap and stuff. And obviously because this is in sort of all in a line already, it doesn't have to have dotted lines in between because then it just busies up the diagram. Now obviously there's a few pieces like this that would have to have some dotted lines so that they can be a little more specific as to where they go. Um, but anyways, so this looks like it's one of those, uh, well, it looks like it might be like some kind of like fire engine or something. I'm not sure what these, that looks like a ladder there. And it looks like it's one of those pedal powered ones. Can you see that? Does everyone see that? Because right here, you see how you have the pedals? Okay. And you also have this little thing right there, right? <coughs> so that helps drive the shaft, right? So that shaft is staggered. And it, so it kind of goes around like this. So it's a pedal powered, probably a little kitty, uh, kitty pedal powered car. Now there's another diagram here that is quite complicated, and um, I think this is, uh, what is this one I saw at the bottom? Uh, no, I think this is like an overdrive or some kind of transmission, um, you know, diagram. So obviously this would be a very long diagram if it was drawn on one piece of paper with one, you know, but, but you'll see this sometimes where the line that kind of comes through the unit and then it goes down back over here and it kind of starts again on the next row you see that so that's a way that they can kind of help you understand that hey you know what there's a lot of pieces I can't fit them all in one piece of paper here and it's the way they organize their diagram so certainly these dotted lines or this a lot solid line like this would help us to understand that this piece right here right um, that spline shaft right there kind of fits into this right here because where follow this line right it goes up okay it goes inside there so where does this go? It goes in there, and it's because of those lines. And it's really nice to, uh, once you get this apart and you're, you know, you're looking for a part, sometimes they have numbers for each of these little rings or these little um, you know, bearings or whatever, and you can get the part number and stuff like that and know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Or if you start taking something apart and you find that something is broken or you, know, you can kind of see, okay, this is the part I need, and when you go to put it back together, because it might not be that very same day, you might need to look back at this diagram, okay, like, okay, which gasket goes first and does the bearing go in front of it? You know what I mean? Like, so this is very, very helpful. And um, you, this is where in automotive here, uh, that's where you see a lot of this, these kind of diagrams, okay? Do you guys have any questions at all about this or anything else we've done so far? So here's, um, here's a bunch more. I mean, I, I just kind of picked a couple that I could teach from here. Uh, this one here is, again, it doesn't have the dotted lines or anything, but you can kind of see that it all fits together like that. And then actually this goes up like this, so this would be some kind of gear shift, right? The transmission, it looks like, uh, yeah, manual, manual clutch sort of thing. So um, anyways, yeah, so very helpful. And they can be very, very complicated as well. <laughs> Gotta know what you're doing. <laughs> Alright, so that's Exploded Diagram and uh, right now we are now at the Practice Your New Skills. So this is kind of the official assignment that I'm going to take into grade here for uh, Section 5.3. This is all the stuff from 5.3 including the isometric dots here, diagrams and that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to go over quickly question number one with you uh, just to explain. This one says, draw the isometric res representation of the following objects using the given shape. So here's, for example, this is the end shape of this object. 
and as the front face. So you want to extend the drawings to create the prisms of the length indicated. So this object here has to be five centimeters long. So on this dot paper, if this is the same dot paper that we've used before, remember the space from dot to dot is 0.5 centimeters. So how many, how many dots, like how far do we have to go from this corner until the end to make five centimeters? Yeah, right, 10. If we want to do 5 centimeters, we've got to go 10 jumps of 0.5. Okay? So you go ahead and you finish. That's number one here. And just, just a reminder, we did that a couple days ago. So, Okay, so there's practice problem number one. And number two, you want to draw a set of stairs with those given dimensions. Here's some perspective diagrams of a set of stairs. Okay, another set of stairs perspective, component parts view, component parts view, and exploded diagram. So a summary of everything that we've done. If you need some help, please look back to your notes and the examples that we've done over the last week here, and uh, then you can ask me if you have trouble after that. Okay.